all week long. We're remembering 9-11 20 years later. And as we approach that milestone anniversary, we wanted to share stories and memories of some of the people we lost that day who had roots right here in Northeast Ohio. Now Maureen Kyle shares the story of one inspiring woman whose family remembers her love of the world. She traveled, she trekked to Nepal 15 times, but she also had a very protective spirit. She had an inner nature of being very joyful and laughing and involved, but you know, she was always watching out for everybody. Her friends all said she was there for them. She was there for everybody. As the oldest of four, Susan Getzendanner always kept watch over her loved ones, especially siblings Tom, Lydia, and Martha. Their childhood in Shaker Heights was a happy one. This is a picture of our house. That's on Broxton Road, and we all grew up there. Lots of kids, lots of memories. We played flashlight tag, kicked the bucket. About five or six houses on that block had bells, like cow bells or big outside bells, and they would ring at the time they wanted their kid to come home and we knew all the rings. Sue graduated from Shaker Heights High School in 1961 and then from Wells College before landing in New York City and beginning a successful career in finance, eventually becoming a vice president at Fiduciary Trust. But as her youngest sister Martha explains, despite her success in the corporate world, Sue's great passion was for traveling and for nature. She was very spiritual. Her cottage in upstate Connecticut, she went to every weekend about and she would walk the woods and swim the river and be there quietly and be a nurturing soul. She just did things. She participated in life every day, every moment. She was really alive. She also carried a deep love for her extended family. She used to come and visit each of us. She was with us with our kids growing up. We can all remember sitting on the porches with her. And when she passed or when we didn't know, what happened to her. Um, a lot of the people over in Bhutan were lighting, uh, what are they called, butter candles and stuff in her name. So she had people around the world thinking about her. It's still hard for Martha and her siblings to think about losing their sister. 20 years have gone by since that tragic day. We were living in our little place in California and we got up early. So we were, you know, up watching news and my husband said, Martha, you better come out and watch this. On September 11th, 2001, Susan was at work on the 97th floor of Two World Trade Center. Her family later learned she was the company's safety officer. She was one of the few employees who did not make it out. Of course, she's not gonna leave anyone behind. She, she Clearly her nature is take care of everyone else. I'm sure that's what she did. That doesn't surprise me in the least. Today, Sue's family is still surrounded by physical reminders of the sister and aunt who was such a huge presence in their lives. I don't know if you've seen it, but that's, that's a really good picture of her. That's a typical smile of her. And she was always wearing happy clothes. You know, this is actually her top. I just wear it all the time now. And they carry her memory close through the generations. Yeah, I don't know. We think about her a lot. We think about her in the nature of the day. Her spirit lives on in us, like, clearly. She's here. She's helping direct us. She's given, like that older sister syndrome. But all of her nieces and nephews had an individual and close contact with Sue. And a number of them contact me at odd times and just say, thinking of Sue today, or this is what I did, and I'm thinking of Aunt Sue. And I wonder what Aunt Sue would do. I wish Aunt Sue were here with me. So we haven't lost her that way. All this week, we will have special coverage as we mark 20 years since the attacks on 9-11. You can watch it here on the air, and we also have more on WKYC.com slash remembering 9-11.